John here guys and today we're talking about the Isheen trash can. Finally I've had this thing for a while and just never got around to reviewing it. I was mostly a little miffed because I pre-ordered this thing well before it came out uh, and it took like over two months to ship and what I noticed was not only did a lot of the reviewers get their copies early which is you know that's fine some reviewers get copies before other folks i've had things pre-release on occasion and so i'm not too upset if reviewers get it but i noticed a lot of regular people were getting theirs way before me and that's because it seemed like uh Bankhead was shipping regular orders earlier than the pre-orders i could be mistaken on that but i noticed a lot of people were getting theirs before mine so by the time i finally got it i felt like so many people had done the reviews that it was just irritating me but let's go ahead and get into it because this is a very interesting uh, quadcopter i would say most people would put it head to head with the happy model mobula 7. now what's notable about the mobula 7 well, one of the most notable things about the Mobula 7 is that it has a lot of problems with the frame. It's almost unflyable when you first get it. Now, there are some newer versions that come shipped with the V2, maybe even the V3 frame, but the V3 frame is essentially this frame. It's basically the Isheen trash can frame. Now, I think they have it coming in white, but it's the same exact design and the same frame. So why not just get the trash can? Uh, after all, uh, here's some of the things that you get when you buy the trash can. You get this beautiful hard shell case, uh, which is nice to be able to carry this around along with some batteries. Uh, and inside the case, you get, I believe, an extra set of props, a couple of little tools. You get four of these 300 milliamp hour one cell batteries from Ishin. These are not the best batteries, um, but you know, they're adequate, they fly. Uh, and you also get this one at a time, tiny little single charger with the USB. Now, it looks like there's two ports on there, but that's actually for the large and small connector. So you can only charge one battery at a time. And being that this is a two cell thing, uh, that makes it a little bit difficult um, seeing that you actually are gonna want to fly both of those batteries at a time. So you're gonna be spending a lot of time charging. You, if this is your only micro brushless loop, you're gonna want to invest in a better charger. And so I'm gonna link the charger that comes with the Tiny Hawk, uh, or the one that did come with the Tiny Hawk. It can charge four at a time and it's only like 450 on bangers. So I'll put the link below. Um, and it also comes with this 1S adapter. So you can fly, I have it plugged in right here. You can fly uh, one cell at a time to get longer flight time indoors. This one does have a lot of power. So indoors, it's gonna be a little bit difficult. Um, so just an FYI, even on 1S. Um, but the LEDs on this thing are really, really cool. Um, it has, I remember back in the day, I had a four LED that I configured to run back and forth like this. You can program the patterns in Betaflight, but this one actually already comes set up to do this back and forth jazz and it has a little trash can logo. I love that Knight Rider effect. <laughs> And then with the LEDs that are on the flight controller and a couple down below that flash uh, in the front and the back, um, this thing is really fun to fly at night because of all of that. So I'm gonna, gonna go ahead and take that battery out so we can go ahead and keep talking. Um, what else? So the notes on this are that it does have some very nice and powerful 803 motors. They are 0803, 15,000 KV motors, but they are rattly. Uh, as mentioned, they're shaky. In fact, this was almost unflyable. And my trash can motors are actually here on this toothpick. Um, I found it very difficult to fly. I'm gonna show some footage of this thing just bouncing up and down on the ground. And that's how rattly it was. Very shaky and unstable. Um, you see, you see how you can see the sort of the rattliness. It's probably the bearings are just not very good. I found that the larger prop of this toothpick allowed it to smooth out some of that. And then this softer plastic thing made it less annoying um, in the footage. This hard um, case right here really transfers all the vibration to your camera. So it's very rattly. So I just couldn't even fly it with the stock motors. And what I did was I bought a set of Mobula 7 motors uh, and because I found them on sale. These are the 0802. Uh, 18,000 or no, 19,000 KV motors that come on the Mobula 7. And they, it's almost as much power. I mean, the Mobula 7 has a tremendous amount of power. The trash can has a little bit more, but it's so close and these fly so much smoother. Well, if you're gonna go ahead and put 
these motors on here, are you just better off getting the Mobula 7? And I'm not so sure about that because, okay, I got these set of motors for the Mobula 7 for like 22 bucks on XYT9 or XT9 or whatever that website is. Um, so, okay, that's the price of a trash can plus 20 bucks. You're looking at about 110, 120 bucks by that point. But what are the upgrades that the trash can has compared to the Mobula? One, the frame's already taken care of. Now the frame's pretty cheap though. Frames are like three, four bucks. Okay, so that's not that big. But the camera, this has the EOS 2 camera by Caddx. You can see that in there. Uh, the camera is vastly superior to the one on the Mobula. But while the image is better, the field of view is not better. This is the 16 by nine version of that EOS 2, which is so frustrating because the four by three version is actually quite, quite good. So the camera has better image quality, but worse field of view. Why did they do it? Uh, but then it also has a better BTX. This trash can um, video transmitter can go all the way up to 200 milliwatts. So if you're flying at any distance and these things can go so fast, you may want to go a little bit longer of a distance. And now, you know, with this linear antenna, you can probably go 100 or 200 yards away on 200 milliwatts. If you're only on 25 though, you're talking about 50 to 100 yards. So um, now keep in mind when you go from 25 to 200 milliwatts, that's not an increase in distance by four. When you go four times, it's an increase of two. So that's basically twice as far that you can go. Uh, so what's the recommendation here? Man, if there was something that you could buy for 90 to 100 bucks that came with the Mobula motors and everything else from the trash can, basically this setup right here, it would be perfect. But as it stands, this is gonna cost you 110 to 120 dollars. So can I really recommend it? Oh man, somebody's gonna do it. Somebody's gonna come up with that package. Um, you can already buy packages of parts from XYT Knight or Banggood and kind of put your own together. It's very easy. Um, so basically that's kind of what this component list is. This is the same board that's in here. This is the same BTX that's in here. This is the good four x three version of the Caddx EOS 2 camera and it's the trash can motors. So, if you assembled all these parts on your own, you'd be spending about the same amount of money, but it doesn't leave you any room in the budget for like the batteries and the charger. And the charger is just a piece of junk, so that's not a big loss. Um, the batteries are kind of a bummer, but these batteries aren't great anyway. So at the moment, it may be the best option to kind of put one together on your own. But if you had to get one, neither one of these, the Mobula 7 or the trash can is gonna fly very great indoors. They're just not, they're just too powerful. Even on one S it's too powerful. You need something a little bit more subdued like the beta 75 pro two on one S or the Emax tiny Hawk darling of the FPV micro drone brushless class. Um, this thing though, if you're going to be flying outside trash can, trash can, trash can, you gotta get the trash can. It's, it's so good, but gosh, why aren't the motors better? I don't know if I just got a bad set guys, but, uh, I've heard a lot of comments from a lot of people saying that they are rattly like this. Now, I don't know if everyone's are as rattly as mine were. Mine were, you know, very, very bad. Uh, but once I put these motors on, it was actually very fun. It has a really good amount of power and the washout that you experience outdoors, the, the prop wash that you experience with things like the beta, um, quads don't exist partially because these are more powerful motors and it just has a better design um, overall but and this seems to have matched the durability of the beta frames you know which I never really thought would be possible the beta frames are just un indestructible but this one has been able to take some hits and you can't even tell I mean it looks brand new um, so very very interesting um, I'm gonna have I'm gonna go ahead and put a recommend but if somebody could put out a package that is basically what I have here motors that are a little more stable but everything else with the trash can now if you were going to go ahead and do it get the 4x3 version of this camera all right so i'm, I'm done rambling let's get the footage thanks <laughs> flight into the dangerous world of a man who does not exist. <laughs> 